Hey there, welcome everybody. A new scene in my house. I am standing on the stairwell here in my dining room. House built circa 1861. I'm deciding if I'm going to keep the pink. The outside is a peachy pink and I wanna pay tribute to the house, but I'm having second thoughts. I painted it that way so I could change the outside and feel better about it, but I digress. We're gonna make this about the chapter, but I just wanna address the fact that I appreciate that you guys are watching these videos. And I wanna explain, even though I do in-person groups, I feel like expansion's been difficult. And I feel like there's so many amazing ladies that are leaders but don't know it. And what I mean by leaders, let's just call it facilitators, people that organize groups, whatever. And I thought maybe by making this video, the, by making these videos, that maybe it would show you didn't have to be perfect. And as you can see, I didn't spend any dinero on hiring a producer, making these what they could be. I have a marketing company. I could have done all that and spent time and resources on that. But I'm kind of like feeling like the creators like just in time make these. Make these for the people that you're are in your tribe, enjoy them, and then pass them out. So if there are some of you that are like, you know, this content might be good to do with people I know, go for it. I, this material, I'm going to put it together for free to give uh, to all of you. I know it's imperfect. I know that there's probably things you're like, get to the point. I just want a little snip, uh, snippet before I make some art. But... I felt like the creator has asked me to make these videos and to try to be creative in that process. So I thank you for letting me expand and some of the dreams and the gifts that I had. I'm gonna start with a memory. As I was preparing for this video, I'm like annoyed that I kinda like have to make these videos because I just like small groups and being together. But I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be obedient. I'm gonna make these videos and I'm not gonna worry about them being perfect even though I want them to be a certain way for my clients. So I'm like thinking about it and. The creator reminded me of a memory. He reminded me of when I was a kid, I used to make these radio shows and I would get my brother and sister involved. I was in charge of them, of them a lot. It was a good creative outlet and we would have this radio show. And I called it Not Necessarily the News and I would give them all these roles and it was really awesome. And my dad still had the cassette tape and he loved to play it to tease me when I was a teenager or even college age. And he said he was gonna play it at my wedding. Thank God he didn't. But I just remember that out of nowhere today. And I feel like even back then, that was something that I was supposed to explore that maybe got blocked along the way. So this is just a creative outlet for me to do the Artist Way workshop um, in community with the Sozo ladies around me and to share that love and the teachings and the, the things that I'm absorbing with you so that we can meet and do our check-in. So I just appreciate um, any following that we have, and if you see ways to expand. Also, since this is, these are so imperfect, these videos, literally I do them outside so my cats don't jump in the screen. I know it's going to happen. Cat fight, something else. But you're truly seeing who I am as a real person, and I just wanted to thank you all for being on the journey and putting up with these imperfect videos, but seeing the bigger picture and how that all works together. And I believe the creator is doing something in me as we're all on this journey together to even make these videos, to have more confidence in myself as an artist, whether that's even just leading, uh, you know, facilitating, all those things that takes creativity. So thank you for being on the journey with me. All right, moving on. Abundance this week. And you know, I feel like that I have a synchronicity already, but we'll get to the chapter and I'll bring it in. And there's cats literally circling this area. All right, I, mean, I know, but sometimes you gotta break and be personal, right? And I've already done that enough. It's like, get into the teaching, but this post here, I have been doing some research and I was told when we bought the house that it was a replica of, um, this, this stairwell here is a replica of a portion of the White House. And I'm like, come on. And it really is. Not like the main areas, but th this really is a replica. <laughs> and from like the same earring people that put some things in the White House. So it's super cool to me. And I just want to share that when my husband and I decided to buy this house, it was a complete mess. It's still a complete mess. But it was such a complete mess that 
it was like overwhelming. Like even though I could see the vision in me, I was like, no way. And we don't have the resources to fix everything. It's a, it's a mess. But there was something inside me that told me this was the house. And I went in the basement. There was all these synchronicities. And I won't get into all that right now. But it was, there were so many confirmations that I felt like I was going to be walking away from a God moment, from abundance, if I didn't take the chance. So I did. And it's been amazing. Not perfect, but amazing. And God's plans are better than our plans. So, all right, with that, let's move on to the chapter. So this week is abundance. So let's see if I can do it without glasses. So it's not so, I don't know. This week you tackle a major creative block and that is money. You're asked to really look at your own ideas around God, money, and creative abundance. The essays will explore the ways in which your attitudes limit abundance and luxury in your current life. You will be introduced to counting a blockbusting tool for clarity and right use of funds. This week may feel volatile. And I can account for that. So what we're going to do right away is read. Sorry, I got all my notes here. All right, so we're going to read on 105 and 106. I'm on 105 right away. All right, so if I can do this. We want a God that feels like a fat paycheck and a license to spend as we please. Listening to the siren song of more, we are deaf to the still small voice waiting in our soul to whisper, you're enough. See ye first the kingdom of heaven and all things will be added to it. We have been told often since childhood, by people that quote the Bible. Well, not just people, but yeah, it's scripture. We don't believe this though, do we? And we certainly don't believe it about art. Maybe God would feed and clothe us in a pinch, but painting supplies? A museum tour of Europe? Dance classes? God's not out to spring for those types of things we tell ourselves. We cling to our financial concerns as a way to avoid not only our art, but also our spiritual growth. Our faith is in the dollar. I have to keep a roof over my head, we say. Nobody's gonna pay me to be more creative. We are awfully sure about that, aren't we? Most of us harbor a secret belief that work has to be work and not play. And that anything we really want to do, like write or act or dance or produce a radio show when you're eight years old, must be considered frivolous, crazy. I added that word. You can do that in our display with your book. You can write in new words. I highly encourage it. And be placed a distant second. That is not true. We are operating out of the toxic old idea that God's will for us and our will for us are at opposite ends of the table. Have you thought about that? We're over here. God's over here. There's no middle ground. He doesn't care about all the stuff we love. What? Why do we think that? All right. I want to be an actress. <laughs> But God wants me to wait tables at hash joints, the scenario goes. So if I try to be an actress, I'll just end up a slingy hash. Thinking like this is grounded in the idea that God is a stern parent with rigid ideas about what's appropriate for us. And you'd better believe we won't like them. Thus, stunted God concept needs an alteration. Big diamond needs an alteration. This week in your morning pages, write about the God you do believe in and the God you would like to believe in. Oh my gosh, I'd like to pause and like do that now. I know that's morning pages. Like I should just, I know what scripture says. 
but I do think there's a disconnect even in me with all the miracle, miraculous things, miracles, miraculous things that I've already seen in my life that the creator has done for me. I still minimize and make him littler than he is. I do. All right. The God he would believe in us. So for some of us, this means what is, what if God's a woman and she's on my side? For others, God's energy for so others, a collective of higher forces moving us toward a higher, the highest good. If you're still dealing with a God consciousness that re that has remained unexamined since childhood, you are probably dealing with a toxic God. Now let's stop there. I realize this isn't a Bible study. I'm not out to make open, open conversions. Obviously, you can tell which way I slay it by this point. But we said we were going to examine our belief systems. We don't have to change them. We're just going to look at them, right? If you haven't examined your God concept since you were a child, or maybe you made covenants or sacraments, or you got married and then you got divorced, or you did this or did that, and you haven't thought about this stuff in a really long time, just examine it. Take a moment to examine those beliefs. And do you believe that God cares about these things? What would a non-toxic God think about your creative goals? Might such a God really exist? If so, would money or your job or your lover remain your highest power? Mm. So, all right, time to get reels. I'm trying to keep this video short, but I just feel inspired to share. Some of you saw on social media that I bought a new car. And I knew that my other car was coming up on the warranty ending and I needed to make a switch. Wasn't having problems with the car yet, but felt it was coming and it was time to make a switch. So I just like bet a dep dependable car person. I just buy whatever cars depreciate. It's not a big deal, whatever. And I just felt this nudging, like, this is the time you can afford it. Um, you know, it's a legit business expense. You can do this. So anyway, without all the financial stuff, I was just like, that's still just like too much money, like a brand new car. I need to buy a used car. There's no, I normally do and all that. But I felt like I was supposed to push myself in this area and explore. So as I did, I was so like, this is too expensive. I don't deserve it. It's crazy. Even though the dreams associated with the type of vehicle I wanted made more sense. So I drove a more sensible car and then I drove a car that a couple of my friends have that I know are dependable and that are new and they felt luxurious and they felt all those things, but something was missing. And it was that I felt like I was supposed to buy a truck. And I've said that a few times, like I'm going to buy a used pickup truck. I've said that to people, but now I felt like the creator was like, buy a new pickup, buy that luxurious vehicle that you love in that particular other car and put, they make a pickup truck that has that. And my girls can't drive pickup trucks and my dad has a truck and I can just borrow my dad's and all this stuff and it's selfish and whatever. But I felt deep down that some of my dreams were connected to a pickup truck. Some of the things I haven't even verbally spoken about, but things involved with ministry, our business, the businesses we own, and maybe a property management business that I'd like to pursue that I feel like God's putting on my heart. That's really weird that I haven't talked about because I'm so busy and I'm not going to jump in anything new. But I feel like if I don't stay, take step one, step two can't happen. Hey, maybe I want to have a horse trailer because I like horses or maybe a boat because I live on a river. I don't know, but I'd have to have a hitch for that which would require a truck. Am I willing to buy a truck? Am I willing to change my identity? Am I willing to spend more money on this luxurious thing that I believe that the creator is nudging me to do, but feels frivolous? And then husband says it's okay. I go in, the credit's terrific. I'm in and out in 20 minutes. Of course there was a tech. Of course the credit got in later. Don't let me, don't let me pretend my life is rainbows and unicorns. But that's abundance and I'm walking it out and I'm living it and I'm sharing it because I don't know the end of the story. But I felt like I was supposed to do that. And I felt like the creator was on board and opened the doors for that to happen.
that's opposite of who I knew myself to be a few days ago. The girl that buys the whatever car that's $10,000, whatever, right? Nothing wrong with any of that. But, you know, so this is a leap of faith to act differently, believing that I'm not idling any car or house or money or anything, but that this vehicle literally is a vehicle to possibly more dreams. And that I don't want to stunt what God is trying to give me. So I'm getting emotional, but it's a big deal. So, all right. Let's stick back to the chapter because I've spent a lot of time getting personal tonight. All right. Thank you for letting me share openly and authentically. And I believe that's what everybody appreciates about these groups. So is money bad? Let's, we're talking about money. I'm struggling with spending money. Money that I have for once. I struggle with feeling like money is my main source of security. Do you? Julia discusses that idea that creativity is not and has never been sensible. Sensible. Should creativity be sensible? Think about that. Should our lives be sensible? Not chaotic, not sinful and awful and hurtful, but sensible. What does that mean? Have you really thought about what sensibility is? Sounds like a creator crusher, in my opinion, if I really think about it. And then we talk about authentic luxury. What does that really mean? Does that, how do we pamper ourselves? Buying this truck is pampering myself. Even though it's a guy thing, but I'm trying to make it a girl thing. <laughs> what does it look like for each of us? Different. There's times the dollar store buying yourself a little cute thing, you know, that you didn't need to have is enough. That's luxury in its own. That perfect item in the thrift store or the yard sale, that amazing dessert, that amazing smell, that flowering plant. It doesn't even have to be cost money. Here comes a kitty. That flowering plant, a subscription to something we love. Mario, you want to be part? <laughs> Go away. <laughs> All right. Lack of money. It's a non-authentic block. We use it all the time, even me. The actual block, and this kind of blew my mind, I had to think through the idea of this, is constriction. Our sense of powerlessness. Art empowers us to a choice. A choice to participate in self-care. So don't skip the artist dates. Don't skip the chance to give yourself a treat a night out a minute to breathe a minute to connect with the creator other forms of luxury time with friends and family times yourself with no agenda how about that Woohoo! how about scheduling time to do nothing oh <laughs> what does that look like we don't need to accomplish anything in the time that we're spending. And it's okay that you want to finish up an art project, but you know what I mean? Like, what if you just didn't want to accomplish anything? It was just this time to nurture yourself and there was no goal. You didn't have to walk away with anything to look at or anything to show anybody else. Whoa. Are you too busy to enjoy pastimes? I know I am especially when it comes to like watching TV with my husband, slowing down, things like that. I remember I went on vacation with my close girlfriends and we were talking about TV shows and I started weeping. They're like, what? They know I don't watch TV, but I'm weeping because I am sensing that I'm missing something. That I have this struggle where I cannot relax to the point where I'm missing out. Not that I want to overindulge in Netflix, but we all have our blocks, okay? We all do it. They just look differently. Okay, have you thought about what brings you true joy? Yeah. What about the concept of the Cinderella syndrome that she mentions? And how it's okay to kind of be that Cinderella like it is. Because we know that some, for some of us, that's our thought process. And switching would be difficult. 
What about getting the glass slipper? What about the end of the story? What about the hope? What about the focus on a good, a good orderly direction happening to you? All right, counting. All right, there's an exercise in there. And it's not to shame us in how we spend our money. I think people confuse it. It's simply an observation for us. Often our spending does not reflect our values. Is that interesting to you? That our spending is not indicative of what we really want to be doing, but are doing? De denying ourselves certain things we de that we desire and throwing away money on things we don't care about. Have you noticed that? Have you looked at that? Sometimes counting helps us find the luxury, that's all. What are your observations if you did the counting exercise? The tasks were great. Find five rocks, buy flowers, put them in a book. She talks about clearing, cleaning, organizing, purging. She talks about making room for the new. She talks about baking a dessert, sending postcards of encouragement, categorizing your favorites. She talks about prosperity, thinking about the shift in change in financial situation. And I'll close with that. And even coming up with like the down payment on this luxury truck that I feel like I don't deserve, that I'm still believing God that I'm going to be able to pay for. <laughs> I had to make some changes and I felt like in my morning pages as I wrote about that, that God even creatively showed me how to pay for it. Put so much down from your business on your first vehicle for that business. There's a kitty. Put so much down personally. Trust me for this and this. Showed me a tiny piece of income that's going to come in to cover a small window. And from there, trust me. You make smart decisions. You ask good questions. I asked good questions when I bought the, the vehicle. I know what I'm going to owe at the end of the term. And I know what I can do about it. And if I want to save more to make payments faster or whatever, because I thought through it and it wasn't afraid. So I am in a process to trust our creator because I took step one that he's going to create step two. And I'm not telling you I'm going to go out and buy an expensive car or truck or whatever. I'm just telling you that look at what God can do if you really think through things. He will show you the answers for what you're supposed to do next. I can't wait to hear your check-ins. Thank you.